Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we've got something quite interesting for you because we have the all new Volkswagen Golf R-Line on review and that is this very pretty blue car behind me here. So underneath the bonnet, this Golf R-Line is actually the same as the standard Golf Life or Golf Life Plus but of course this comes with the R-Line package all around the car and inside the car as well so there are some exterior and interior differences to the car. So for today's review we're going to go check out its exterior, I'm going to point out some of the main differences, we're going to jump inside, check out some of those uh, updates as well and then of course we're going to go take it for a drive. But before we do all that, if you are a driver in Singapore and you are thinking about selling your used car for the best price possible, check out the link in the description box below because through those links we will be able to help you to sell your car or consign it for the best price possible. It's free to inquire so if you're interested please do check out the link and with that let's get on with the review. Alright so jumping straight into the review, um, this is the exterior of the Golf R-Line and um, very handsome looking car I must say. Um, I've always felt that Golfs in general have always been very good looking cars and um, I think the Golf Life Plus was already a very good looking car but with this R-Line version, I think Volkswagen have taken it up to the next step and this is of course done through some exterior upgrades over the Golf Life Plus so allow me to point out some of those differences to you so being an R-Line car with R-Line package um, of course you have the R badge at the front here and of course, you've got a slightly more aggressive front bumper and uh, uh, front front skirt as well. Uh, this bumper design, so on the spec sheet, they actually say that this is an R-Line package and, uh, and you would assume that would mean an R-Line bumper. But actually, this bumper looks a lot closer to the GTI bumper. Um, they are slightly different in terms of design. I'm not sure why Volkswagen have fitted this particular bumper um, to the... Um, to the R line, but anyway, um, still looks very good. I think it looks very pretty, and uh, it's kind of subtle in a way as well. Because if people don't point it out to you, you don't really realize it. It's not outward and in your face. But at the same time, if you look at it from afar, you're just gonna go like, "Hey, this is a really good looking car." Um, down the side, you have 18 inch wheels as standard, so not too large, still quite palatable for day to day driving. But if you are buying this car for aesthetic reasons. I would recommend moving this up to 19 inches because I think that would look absolutely sick. Um, and of course, you can't really tell the difference because this isn't huge but this car is actually lowered slightly compared to the Golf Life Plus. So, uh, you do have a slightly more aggressive stance which I think will go very well with 19 inch wheels. So if you enlarge the wheels with the lowered setup, you've got very little uh, wheel allowance inside the wheel hub so I think that's really cool. Um, but of course, that will likely affect your economy slightly but um, I leave that up to you whether or not you think that's a good idea. Uh, down the side here, you've got more R badging and of course you've got some side skirts as well and all this definitely does help the car to look a little bit better. And you know, to be honest, from the front, if you drive into a car park, actually people might actually think that you are driving an actual Golf R. However, once we get to the back, then it becomes a little bit more apparent that it's not a Golf R and that it is a standard Golf, just that it's in an R-Line trim because you start to see the ETSI and although you have the more aggressive diffuser and rear bumper, the exhaust tips are different. So you can definitely um, tell the difference here. Uh, personally, I would have preferred to have regular exhaust tips because that makes the car a little bit more upgradable without having to rip out the entire bumper. So I'm not sure how integrated these chrome tips are to the actual diffuser, but assuming they are built into the diffuser, if you wanted an exhaust upgrade, you would have to kind of modify the entire bumper as well, which I think is a little bit troublesome. And because the Golf R line, not Golf R, Golf R line is essentially an aesthetic upgrade over the Golf Life Plus, I would imagine that people who would be keen to get the Golf R line are probably a little bit more aesthetically driven. So um, upgraded wheels, exhaust tips, maybe quad tips are probably you know in on the agenda. So I would think that a uh, standalone 
exhaust tip would probably be a little bit easier to modify um, somewhere down the line as well. But in any case, I digress a little bit. Um, generally speaking, you can see that the car has had a bit of an elevation in terms of the aesthetic appeal and I and I absolutely love this colour as well. Uh, my, like my own car is a, it, it's in a colour that's quite similar to this. So I really appreciate um, the paint job on this car. Um, but enough about that, let's, let, let's jump inside the cabin and see what differences there are on the inside of the Golf R-Line. All right, all right. So this is the cabin. Welcome to the cabin of the Golf R Line. And there are quite a few little bits of differences in this car. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get all of them, but let's do our best. So what I can see is that there are new carbon inlays on the dashboard here. Obviously, I I, I doubt this is real carbon fiber, but it's tastefully done. It's not weird and glossy, it's actually in a matte finish, so that's quite cool and contemporary. Um, there is a R-Line steering wheel, so this is flat bottom of course, um, and it has the R emblem at the bottom here. So it feels really great to hold, really really nice uh, when you drive, and uh, I think steering wheels being quite a big focal point of the car really does help to elevate the, um, the entire feel and premiumness of the cabin. Um, elsewhere, up front, um, pretty much the same as you would get in a regular Golf. So you've got a full digital driver's display. And of course, this is uh, customizable to your display preferences. And you do that all, you do all that through the multi-function steering wheel. And uh, over here is your infotainment unit, of course, touch screen. And uh, the color scheme, They've actually set it to the uh, blue set, the blue color scheme, which is of course goes very well with the color of the car on the outside. Uh, but you can actually customize this color as well. You can change it to orange, red, yellow, uh, whatever suits your fancy or floats your boat. You know, um, down the center console, uh, you've got wireless charging pad, uh, and then of course you've got your digital, or oh, sorry, not digital, but your your uh, drive selectors, uh, which are pretty standard in all the cars and of course you've got cup holders here uh, on two cup holders actually uh, one smaller one and one yeah so two cup holders very usable stuff this is the key in case you no differences on the key it would be nice to have an R logo on the key but I think that would have cost too much to make um, and then uh, seats 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 are different so the they're not exactly bucket seats, but they are R-line seats, so they're sport seats. So what you do get is, um, you get a bit more support on the sides. There is a bit of a bolster on the side, uh, which <laughs> uh, makes it a little bit harder to get into. But aesthetically, it's very nice. I like it. And uh, of course, this has the, um, the seats have the R emblem that's sort of uh, uh, embossed into the seat fabric as well. And then of course you've got side side bolsters here, which are really great for hugging you when you're throwing the car into corners. Uh, but keep in mind though, this is a Golf R line, not a Golf R. Um, so uh, you probably will not be chucking into corners too often as well. Um, but in any case, we'll talk a little bit more about how the car handles later on in the driving segment. For now, let's jump into the back seat and check out the rear of the car for those of you who are interested. After setting the camera, <laughs> I actually went back to the front seat instead of getting back in, getting into the back seat. But anyway, we are finally here. We are finally in the back seat of the Golf R Line. <clears throat> so, uh, to start things off, this driver's seat is in my regular driving position. I am 175 meters tall, and this is the amount of legroom that I have. So, still very decent, uh, very decent for a hatchback, and uh, very usable on a day-to-day -day basis. So, a full-size adult definitely can fit comfortably into the rear and uh, we actually took a bunch of Golfs and Skodas uh, up to Malaysia recently some months back and we actually drove it over some longer distances and actually while I was in the passenger seat in, in the rear it was actually pretty comfortable as well so um, if you're interested to check out the video you can actually click up here 
Um, but in, in, in any case, uh, going back to seating uh, space, this is the leg room that I have and this is the amount of headroom that I have. So actually pretty respectable. If you want to sit in a more natural sitting position, then headroom becomes a little bit more, more uh, generous. And of course you do sacrifice your leg room, but uh, generally very comfortable with that here. Um, windows are also nice and large and they come down to quite a low height as well. So um, visibility out the car is going to be pretty nice. And I also like the fact that you are seated in quite a level Quite on, on, on quite a level plane as the rest of the car and not jacked up at the back um, which makes cruising longer distances in this car a little bit more palatable uh, down the middle here you've got aircon vents which are very essential for Singapore's hot weather just like today and you've got a climate control uh, switch here as well so you can adjust the temperature to your preference can I? can I? I'm not sure yeah you should be able to um, but in any case uh, Aircon vents in the hatchback are definitely a plus point, nonetheless. So not gonna complain there. Um, isofix points. So you definitely have isofix points as well. Pretty standard in every car nowadays, and uh, this makes it great for carrying uh, kids in a rearward ch facing child seat. Uh, you will have to put your seat a little bit forward uh, in this car to fit a rearward facing child seat, but you should be able to do that with no problem. But that does bring me to one point though, because these seats, these sports seats, have a sort of a bigger footprint, a bigger silhouette as well. So, uh, honestly, it makes it a little bit hard for me at the rear to look out of the car, which makes me feel a little tiny bit more claustrophobic than if I were in a life plus. So, uh, I think that's one point that, you know, if you've if you've got people who get easily car sick, you might, you might, this might be a point of consideration for you. Um, the other thing as well is that these seats do take up a bit more space, I feel. So, um, it does hinder the child seat application a tiny bit. So, if you are thinking about uh, putting kids in this car or using a rearward facing child seat in this car, you probably want to make sure that your front passenger is a smaller size person because then the seat can go in front a considerable amount because if you're going to try and force a large person to sit in front and then try to squeeze a child seat at the back it is probably a little bit of a stretch um, but that being said I think this car is perfect for young families say mommy, daddy and then a child because then the uh, non-driver parent would probably be seated here in my seat right now attending to the child anyway so you wouldn't really have any issues with this seat here you can push it all the way to the front uh, it wouldn't really matter um, yeah so that's pretty much that um, let's go drive the car because on the way to this filming site I actually feel like there's it's technically the same drivetrain but the car actually feels a bit different I'm not sure why exactly in a not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if there's even a, 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 media, a media explanation for this But uh, anyway, let's go jump back in the driver's seat and go for a drive Let's go Okay So <coughs> Back in the driver's seat of the Golf R-Line and to get some basic specs out of the way and for those of you who already know about the Life Plus this will be the same but it has the same 129 brake horsepower and uh, 200 newton meters of torque so this fits comfortably within category A COE in Singapore uh, I'm not sure how much longer the Cat A and Cat B difference is going to make a difference but in any case cars, Cat A cars are still cheaper to buy at the moment and um, Obviously, you, 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 you probably do save a bit on fuel and in terms of economy if you're driving a car that is specced for lower power. So I guess that's good day to day. Um, but I think one of the more interesting things about the Golf is that in the Cat A segment right now, if you talk about smaller engines and stuff, um, this is one of the few cars that still retains a four cylinder. So yes, it has 129 horsepower, it's not the most powerful car in the world and um, it's only 1.5 litres but it's 4 cylinder. So 
you do get a certain big car feel when you're moving around in the golf. In fact, just moving off that short distance, you can already feel like there's a certain sturdiness about about the entire drivetrain that is actually really, really pleasant. And uh, I think that's one of the things that I've always liked about golfs since um, since I myself had one back in the days of the Mark VI Golf. Um, the engines always kind of felt extremely willing to be pushed and although it's a hatchback, the car feels like a much larger car to drive uh, in terms of its drivetrain and the road feel, which is a pleasant thing. Um, in terms of how the driver feels, uh, actually another thing that I love about the Golf is how the car has always been really really engaging to drive regardless of what sort of power specs you have on the car so um, first thing that makes the car really nice to drive is the way the cabin is kind of set up and there's no real objective way to kind of talk about this but when I'm seated here I actually feel like I'm blended into the windscreen uh, almost like I'm driving a simulator which is very immersive and then the way the rear view mirror is set up also makes you feel like there's no that there's no back seat in this car it feels like there's just a mirror or, 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 or just a rear glass in your face so everything around you feels very close to you so to speak and that makes it really really pleasant uh, makes you very engaged as a driver um, about what's going on in your surroundings um, other part that's very very intuitive about the Golf is of course the very wonderful 7-speed dual clutch which is probably one of the most intuitive transmissions that you can buy today on a car that is spec for city roads so as you're cruising around even if you're going at higher speeds the moment you kind of take your foot off the gas the car senses this and it primes itself and it drops the gear and I, and I can't say the same for every single car that's available out there. Uh, you'll be surprised, right? Because this is such a simple bit of ECU programming. You would imagine that all cars today would respond in this manner. But no, um, it's not really not that common. And uh, I think in that sense, in this segment, the Golf offers one of the most engaging drives as well. Um, Earlier on, I said that the car feels a bit different from the life class and I still feel like it does. I don't know why. Um, so the uh, when I drove the life plus, I kind of felt like the car was really, really agile on its feet and um, uh, for lack of a better word, it was really, really smooth uh, in a nice way. In the R line, the car has a bit of a low end rumble. Um, so the, 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 the feeling here is that it doesn't feel as smooth as it rolls off but it actually feels a lot more raw, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more gangster <laughs> which I kind of like, I think it's really good. Uh, you kind of feel the entire drivetrain going forward and then of course you feel everything on the road as well. I think it's wonderful, it's so fun to drive and I think the Golf has always been one of the best handling cars out there. Um, and I'll show you in a little bit as well. So I'm gonna put the car through a little bit of a S curve and we're gonna see how it does. You know, everything just feels, you know, for a front wheel drive car, it's just so, so wonderful that you can do all this. So. <laughs> so, so easy. So pleasant. Road manners is great. Um, and I think its handling is actually really, really nice. Um, but enough about that. Um, I think the Golf is probably something you should consider if you're probably unsure, like, you know, maybe what sort of car to buy in this segment and you want something that's really good value for money, something that you can't go wrong with. Uh, I, I think that's exactly what the Golf brings to the table in because it's really quite hard to go wrong in a golf. Um, it does everything really, really well. Uh, apart from of obviously being a much bigger car um, because you can't really do anything about that. But in terms of its build quality, excellent. Styling, great. 
um, driving engagement and driving dy dy dynamics, wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful. So I think if you are in the market for something that's very well rounded, I think you know this is definitely a car that you should consider as well. Um, last but not least, I'm going to talk about something boring, which is fuel economy. So um, currently now we've been pushing the car a little bit, so e economy's like pretty shit in the on the meter but that's not the car's fault that, that's probably our fault um, but earlier on when I was cruising along on the highway uh, I got a little bit of a shock because I was doing 90 and I took my foot off the gas and the car just cruised on forever at the same speed didn't even you know like it, it, it just kept going and uh, I think I'm not entirely sure if there is a cruise function or a sort of coast mode on this because I did not see the RPMs drop to close to zero but I think this could probably be the work of the mild hybrid um, drivetrain where it does assist the car um, with a little bit of coasting and I think that's a really really nice feature to have it makes you feel like you're really getting the most out of your the most out of your acceleration, you know, you step on the gas this much, you but you get, but you get quite a lot more uh, travel. So I think all that is really, really cool. Um, if you are thinking about having a car that's good on fuel economy, I think this is probably one of the better options as well. All right. So um, if I've missed out anything about the car that you about the Golf R line that you, oh my god, my parking is failing me. So if you have any questions about the Golf R line that I missed out, I didn't address, please put them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Um, and as usual, you know, if you have found this uh, review useful or have or you have enjoyed this review, uh, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. So subscribe to the channel because we've got new reviews coming out every single week. So it would be wonderful if you could join us for those reviews. Um, as a parting reminder, if you are a driver in Singapore and you want to sell your used car or consign it for the best price possible, please check out the links in the description box because through those links, we'll be able to provide you the best possible price for your used car. Uh, if not, please stay safe, take care of yourself, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.